Did you ever light up someone with that particular video key? of me when I was 19 from a oh. Taekwondo tournament, making a guy fly through the air? Yeah, are you it's serious? It's on YouTube. Yeah, Jamie. Oh Jamie my God, it. is he okay yeah. now? Is he alive? I don't know. Here it is, right here. Are you kidding me, man? Oh yeah, okay. See, no, no, yeah. that was that was perfect. And he just sailed through the air. <laughs> <laughs> like, <sighs> that's terrible. It's not gonna. Oh, God. You gotta pick your knee up. You have a <laughs> no. See, it's not bad, but you have a, an inherent flaw in your technique that probably was never, never explained wait, wait, look, to look, you. This is what I do. Watch. For forty-nine, though, it ain't bad. <sighs> that's not, pretty good. It's not right. Just pick I your wouldn't want to get hit by that. Don't throw the kick until your knee's up high. Lift your knee up way high past your waist, and then throw the kick. Yes. Knee up first, and then don't look over your stomach. Look over your shoulder. Yeah, but knee first. Knee here, hold on. I look, right from here. Watch. Oh, son. Okay. Damn. Watch. Even in oh. the air. Even in the air, Sometimes fucking Chuck ass. Norris no, is blushing. You I know. Lift your knee up, and then kick. Right. Watch. One. Two. Okay, ready? So the difference. I'm not mad at Joe's yeah. form at all. One. No. Up. Dude, I'd love to see an actual Taekwondo yeah, match between Callan and Rogan. Like that. That's better. I would just stare at their asses. And then they had these little microphones, right? So with, yeah, I don't know, but fast. It was like, it was five guys, four or five guys. And they start fighting. And the guy that I knocked out constantly, because he would wake up, right? And everything went good and went good. And But then I start realizing, wait a minute. This, these guys are going to come back up all the time, you know. This is going to come to an end. i got to get the hell out of here. So, so you're knocking them down. So you're hitting them, they're falling down. Everyone that's coming at you, you're knocking down, but you're realizing you got to get out of here. I had to get out of there. They looked at me, and they all stepped back. So I go, whoa, they can see I mean business, right? But behind me is the whole police force <laughs> <laughs> outside because there were windows. So they, uh, they throw me in jail and, uh, because apparently one of those bouncers was a cop. And yeah, and I knocked him out, of course, also, but he never told me that he was a cop, otherwise I wouldn't have done that. Anyway, we're there, and this is also, this is actually a funny story, because before this all happened, I'm talking to my wife, and I'm already tanked, right? And she says, why are you laughing? Why are you have so much fun? I said, honey, I'm drunk. I'm having a lot of fun. She says, no, you're there with two Swedish blonde girls, huh? I said, honey, don't worry about it. You know me. If I'm drunk, you know, I don't care about anything, especially not that. I just want to have fun. So after two days, they allowed me to give my first phone call. And um, I'm calling my wife, and she's freaking out. I said, honey, you got to be, okay, relax, relax. I say, I got some good and some bad news. What do you want to hear first? She says, uh, the good news. I say, I didn't fuck two Swedish girls. <laughs> <laughs> she says the bad news. That's I'm in jail. <laughs> you think this is fun? She's going to hate me for this story because every time she says, you should tell us. You know, it's not funny. I think that's a hell of a story. I love that. <laughs> right? Yeah. You can't, you can't it's write like a it. movie. <laughs> he looks at his reading role sheet, calling names, and he goes, come on, rude. Who the fuck? Who the who's this kid? Who the fuck is this kid? And I'm like, that's me, coach. He's like, that's your name? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. He's like, I'm not saying that because my whole full name is Kamarudin, Kamarudin, Kamarudin. And he's like, I'm not gonna say that. Like Kamar Kamarudin, Kamar Mar. I'm gonna call you Marty. So you know, for him to bring it, up, I thought it was silly. But you know, these fans, fans mm -hmm. wanna they because Ben. Is a representative of the trolls. Like uh, most of the trolls look like Ben Askren. If I can give you any info, that's hilarious. Yeah. That is hilarious. <laughs> if if you look at him from a skill set, Ben's not even worth waking up before like 10 a.m. in the morning. But I don't like this dude, man. Before my alarm goes off, I'm already awake. I want to break his fucking face, man. I want to break his fucking rib cage, and I don't want to knock him out early on. I don't. I just want to hurt, torture that guy, man. If I get the chance to torture him for 14 minutes and 50 seconds before I stop him, that's what I'm going to do, man. You know, I just, I don't like the dude at all. I met him a long time ago. He's a fucking prick, man. I don't like him, man. There's not too many people that I genuinely dislike. He's one of them. Game bread is in the building, and these guys just flapping guns at each other. One. Any chance Fight. Get the fight clock. Flawless victory. How did that scene come to play where you were with Hicks and Gracie? Oh, cause I, cause I was, I studied Aikido oh. when I was in college. Um, but because my interest in that for years 
when we went to Rio, Rio, and I had been working on the script of that movie and stuff, and I was like, I was really interested in this idea that Banner is is desperate for control, right? That he desperately, desperately needs to control his heart rate, his breathing, that it's a massive liability in his mind if he can't control his emotions and his adrenaline. And I was like, well, who in the world? And I, I'd seen the videos of Hicks. I'd never met him or any of them, but I'd seen the videos of him doing the um, amazing stuff with his stomach. Yeah, the yoga. And, yeah, yeah, and the breathing. Fire breathing. And I was like, and I, I just was like, we have to, and, and everyone was like, who's that? I was like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, Philistines, you're all Philistines. Like, I was like, and I was like, find me Hicks and Gracie and ask him if he'll do a scene with me in the movie being the guy who's training Banner to like calm himself. And he was there and he, and he did it with us. Wow. And it was like, I was like. So that's, that's a very essential thing, which sometimes slip through people's fingers and, and the priorities and the daily, you know, and the, the payments. And the, so I put you in a role where uh, I feel like um, if you tell me in the past, what's the, the courage, what's the opposite of courage, I want to say cowardness. Because either you're tough enough to, to challenge and to fight or to, or and then you coward and you chicken out. So that's in the past was like the, 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 the opposite of, of, of courage. It's very hard to measure this in those days. And I believe the opposite of courage today is conformity. You know, mm. as people get conformed, oh, I, I don't like my wife the way I used to like, but I'm never going to divorce because I'm afraid to lose my house. Or the situation is so established, so I'm going to keep, so I don't like this job, but I'm going to keep here because it's better than his. So, in, in, in other hands, if you, if you get caught on that kind of compromise to, to maintain because you, you're afraid to risk, Let's keep you like one step behind from you. Follow your heart, follow your ambition. If you're 18 years old, you don't think twice. The guy say, hey, let's go to Australia. You think, okay, let's go, boom. But when you're 50, you say, Australia, what are I going to do there? Maybe I'm going <laughs> to... So it's different, you know? That's me. <laughs> and, and, and that's kind of... Am I getting paid or what? what? Where are we going? <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of pretty much where keep you from be at your best. Because if you're willing to sacrifice... If you're willing to to broke new new challenges, if you're willing to, you in a stage of liveness and and excitement and unpredictability, who make you feel like you in heaven. Well, I, I write a, I write letters to everyone that's close to me before every fight. Really? Yeah, and every time I come back alive from the fight, I burn them all. Wow! And so literally, I'm I'm training the the three months that I'm training for a fight. I'm literally training not to die and if you knew there was a possibility you were going to die in this certain area most people would avoid it but we have to do we i have to walk there on my own will and the stress level for me i mean i wish i could just take it lighter and say it's a sport i mean every time i fought after i fought win or lose i always felt like shit it's over i'm alive because i was willing to die in the fight you know you know you were on death's door and recover from it and then put yourself back in risk. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, yeah, saying it like that, it, 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 there's, no, there's no justifying that other than I was in this sport that, that I really wanted to, to, to be in and stay in. And, I, and after the disease, I wanted to go back to. And it, it, that, was the, that was the landscape. And so you viewed it, you thought, okay, uh, this is not ideal, but you asked the question, what am, am I really, you know, having, knowing my health history, right, with cancer, with all, the, all that I went through, is going back to my sport and taking EPO a risk to that, to that you know, to my, to, to my disease or to my health? Um, and, I, and the answer to that, obviously, my answer to myself was no. So, without a shadow of a doubt, none whatsoever, death is not the end. You don't think so? I know. I know, Joe. How do you know? Because I've been dead. Right. Yes, I've been dead. What, what, I, what about that experience cemented it in your head? Um, when I, like I said, it was the most peaceful. Um, and and I, I don't feel like it was the most peace, most restful, most, I was, I woke up 
laughing. I was, yeah, yeah. My wife said really? I was, I was overjoyed. Yeah, man. You still think about it? Nah, see, because I, what happened to me was I woke up in the hospital <laughs> and had emergency heart surgery, like ninety eight. So it was like I was like, oh, I'm done smoking. What happened was I went to bed. Was, ah, I'm real tired. I'm not feeling good. Went to sleep and woke up in Cedars, like after surgery. You know, it was my extreme fortune to live in a neighborhood uh, uh, that was the 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 closest hospital was Cedar Sinai. Oh, nice. And then it was it was you know also my uh, uh, Irish luck that uh, the best heart surgeon in the world, who Doctor uh, William Trento, was who's chief of heart surgery over there, I think maybe even of all surgery, saw my case and told somebody else, you can't do that, I have to do that. And what I have in there now is a St. Jude's heart valve. It's a titanium heart valve. Like, I tick like a watch, man. Whoa. You wanna, you wanna hear? Hold up, hold yeah. up. Get real sensitive on this mug right here. Oh my God. Holy wow. shit. Wow. <laughs> But then my brother says this thing probably defined my life. My brother goes, uh, he died screaming. And I go, what? what? And he goes, he, he died screaming. And I was like, what? I mean, that's, is that a figure of speech? And he goes, no, he literally, he died screaming. And you could see my brother was haunted by it. And my father wasn't like, a, I wouldn't say he was a butch man or strong man, but he wasn't a soft man, money stretched in the imagination. And I never heard him get real loud or anything like that. And the notion of my father dying screaming changed my life because I was like, even a good man in this world, you play the game, you play it straight, you play it by the rules, you do everything you're supposed to, you're going to die screaming. And at that point, I was like, there's no point in not trying to accomplish every stupid fucking dream I've got. Chase it all down. Chasing whimsy is what I've been doing for the last few years. But chase it all and do it all because we're all going to die screaming. <laughs>